It's the final episode of The Clone Wars, and we're going to analyze my playing. May the bass be with you. Metal Bass Monday. So, welcome back, and let's do a couple channel updates. I'm going to be opening a Discord server. That'll be up uh, by next week's episode, and that's going to be a really cool thing. Uh, I looked into it, and it's going to give a number of solutions for things that I've been wanting to do, and I've been kind of testing out with you guys and everything, but I'll be able to do video chat, regular audio, do uh, video clips over it, and a lot of other features to the channel that we can do on the regular and have a reliable place to go to. So that's going to be very cool. I'll have that set up and links for it uh, next episode. So, expanding and in a cool way. So the other piece of news is I've also looked into another platform, and I'll reveal that next week as well. Uh, it's going to be very cool. I've found a place where I can put up some of the content that I've really wanted to share with you guys, but because of all the copyright things and stuff with YouTube, I can't do it in the way that I want to here. I'm still looking into doing abbreviated versions here and kind of directing people who want to see the full episodes over at the other platform, but things like uh, Metal Base Microscope and stuff like that, or some of my longer analysis tracks, they're going to get hosted over there, and I can play the full pieces for you. And we can really get in depth and go deep on it without me having to worry about a takedown or a strike or you know anything like that. And on that note, uh, sometime this week, uh, I'm going to be talking about the Rick Beato, Lee Sklar copyright thing. If you haven't seen what's going on with it, look into it or, uh, you know, check out this episode too, or do both. I'm going to be talking more about it and where I really think things are going to wind up going if this problem can't get ironed out. So that's coming up here soon. So as I mentioned last week, we're going to talk about how to develop a baseline and not just you know using heavy technique but really how you should be thinking about your lines i'm going to do this in two parts and we're going to talk about how to develop your baseline as a listener first that's going to be a new way probably of looking at your lines and one that i think is really important i'm going to go pretty deep on this so stick with me it's going to be good information and all of it is relevant to creating really elaborate lines with tapping, but it's relevant to how you do your bass lines, period, even super simple ones. It will go into developing your own style and your own sound and developing things, like I said, as a listener. So let's get started there and we're going to do it in two parts. So one of the things I find is a stumbling block to writing really good bass lines is ironically people rely too much on their instrument. An instrument is just that in its name. It's a thing that gets music out of you out to an audience. It's just a tool. As much as we may love them and everything, our basses are still just something that we use to transmit what's in our head you can really get kind of caught up with that and the problem is when you develop bass lines or you write music with your bass in your hand a lot of what you're putting out is really just muscle memory it's pieces of things you played before it's your habits from warming up it's leftovers from a song you just learned it's not really something that is native to you all the time or a true expression of yourself it's a display of habits and the best way to break that is to go back to the position of being a listener. If you write as a listener instead of a performer, you're almost always going to be more satisfied with your playing. Because even if it's a simple line, it's a simple line that you heard in your head and was what your impulse to want to hear at that point was. So you're going to be happy with it. It's based off of your most natural reaction to music. And... I find 100% of the time that always makes the difference. I'm going to do a lesson on this at another time uh, as we get into the production series I've mentioned about how to write from a listening point of view and some things about getting out of the studio and why it's better to write uh, you know, without your instrument a lot of the times and show you there some of the big differences as far as songwriting. But even its simplest form 
reacting as a listener is going to give you your best results. And the more you get yourself to do it, the better you're going to become at translating your ideas and hearing your ideas instead of hoping that the base almost is going to inspire you to do something. You want to be inspired yourself and transmit that through your instrument. So what we're going to do is analyze a piece of something I did in another video that I've been asked about before, and I'm going to show how my thinking would move up to the more complex idea that it turned into. And because it uses tapping and it's got some fairly rapid parts in it, I'm going to show that there's an underlying idea that's very simple and that you can hear it if you really listen for it. And the underlying baseline will be fine all by itself. You want to level it up in stages. So let's check out the piece and start deconstructing it. So there's a lot going on in there and it sounds very splashy and everything, but let's break it down to the really simple components. If you listen to the drum line, there's an underlying feel that's being emphasized. It's got this ba ba ta ta ba ta ta ba ta ta ba ta ta ba 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 ta ta ba ta ta ba ta. So you've got this very kind of staggered feel to it. Now, when you go to write, instead of picking up your instrument, hear that drum beat. Start with drums as often as you can. This is the place that you're going to lock in first more than anything. So starting from this point of, of the music, just listen to that. Slow it down in your head mentally if you have to, but you know, try and react as immediately as possible and just start to hear what bass lines are going to work over this. You've got this So it's got kind of a rapid and staggered feel. So let's start with our feel and just hear what kind of bass line goes on. Uh, I would naturally tend to lock in with drums. I would try and add note value to what the percussion is. That's generally my first approach to things. Sometimes I play against the drums, but especially in something rapid like this, I'm going to try and be hitting all those accents with the drummer and build a bass line off of it. So I'm not really going to think about my instrument. I'm just going to think, how would I want to approach something like that, hitting those accents? To me, right away, I would kind of hear two things in my head. If I wanted to go heavier, I would probably uh, use like a very short interval, a minor second or something, and play uh, something kind of aggressive over it. Or if I wanted to expand and open up the idea, I might make an, an octave idea on top. So let's check out those two ideas. So if I want to make it a really aggressive, short interval type of thing, I might just go open to first fret or something and... You know, something like that. And that's fine. It might just, you know, lock in and just be the intro to a song and just hammer away and make it nice and ugly, you know. If I want to, like I said a minute ago, make it more open, I might go up to the octave in the open string and do something like a... So that's going to take up a bit more sonic space and maybe let the guitar move over me a little more because I'm not defining something by hitting that flat second. Having the octave, they can run a lot further and try some different ideas without worrying about it clashing quite as much. So that's just the basic pulse of it. That kind of idea would be fine right there. I'd probably like the idea if I heard it and I reacted as a listener. I heard the bass line in my head first, then I came to the instrument to figure it out. So that's, you know, a very simple version of it. Uh, you know, obviously we can go into much longer bass lines and just learning to sing your parts out, but imagine them first and then figure them out on the instrument. You will, you'll never go wrong by doing this. I'm telling you, the better you start to kind of be able to pull that magic player out of your head that you always kind of have back in there and you're always inspired to be, if you can get that player's voice to come out and then just figure out what it is, that's win across the board, and that really should be the aim for your parts if you want to always listen back to your recordings and go, that was awesome, because you reacted to the music without restriction. 
Your hands have restrictions. They have habits. They have limits. Your mind doesn't. So let your hands be tools of your imagination and have the ideal bass player that lives in your heart, in your mind, and is who you want to be. Let that person guide. And that's really what this comes down to. And it's probably the best piece of advice I could ever give to someone as a player is don't look for, you know, this, all this stuff all over the fingerboard. The fingerboard isn't the teacher. Your mind is. Let your instinct and your imagination dictate to the instrument, not the other way. So now let's expand this idea and see how I came up with the rest of it. So if we're going to embellish a part, what you still want to do is react as a listener. Let's check out the fully finished part and listen to the drums and hear what's going on here. So there's a lot going on with the snare, there's a lot going on with the cymbal work, there's all these little flurries going. And I may want to follow that and add some real sparkle and some real frenetic type of energy into this because the drums are really intense. And if I'm just doing something like a, you know, that may not be as much as I want to do to convey this part. So. How can I dress this part up, but still keep my original idea and the simplistic bass part that seems to carry pretty well during this? So let's say we want to add some tapping to it, like I did. I'm going to take the fundamental idea of this, which is to use an octave as the place to bounce to. And so now I'm going to move it, say, to, we're going to put it in D, third fret of the B string. and. I'm just going to use this idea. So now I've got the octave boom, better, do, better, do, better, better, going on this end. So what can I add to this up here to create a bit more movement in between? So I'm going to add the fourth. And so now I'm going to get a somewhat spread out alternating flurry of notes that are going to match out with the other pieces uh, that, you know, that the drummer's doing, so adding in how he's kind of tripling up on hi-hat and crash hits and things. And, you know, I could do a fourth or I could do, you know, another octave. I could do a seven. But what I'm doing is just going because remember, our, the feel of the bass line goes ba ba ta ta ba ta ta ba ta ta ba ta ta ba. So I'm going to double those notes up by rolling back and forth in between them and going. So I'm getting that initial hit here and then. So this is the beginning of being able to take the ideas that are usually reserved for shred and all these things where we just play a normal or simple bass line and then we wait for a big moment to be able to come up and probably overplay the song or do something and take those pieces and turn them into actual bass lines. This is the thing that's going to change you into a much more extravagant but useful player. Just being able to shred during solos or during lead things or matching guitar parts, that's one thing. But when you can take these kind of more open and wilder techniques and things and actually create bass lines, that's when it becomes truly useful. You don't have to solo if your bass line is the solo. But at the same time, you don't want something that's just ridiculous and out of place. So you build it from the core bass line. The core bass line is still in here. You can still hear... It's just now going. So you've got it spread across a much larger area and you're doubling up on the notes and you're kind of giving note value again to all the flourishes of the drum kit. So now you have an integrated piece going on, a simple idea that we're using more complex technique to fill out and add range to 
And, you know, just this intro, if you listen to it, you could put a guitar line over it. You could have like a screaming lead or something like that. And if we listen to the next part, I'm very much thinking in a songwriting type of way, even though it's just bass and drums. This to me is a very intense, you know, horse out of the gate intro. And to contrast it, what I do is I slam up against, you know, a, a total feel change. And I go into a more finger style bass line with a really heavy, really guttural groove in it. And to me, it gives that desired effect. So I'm not just using tapping for like a, hey, let's show off. I've got this whole piece done together. And it's just something I'm going to throw into a song because look at me. It's I'm build, using it to build intensity. I'm using the technique for what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to sound explosive and intense. And then by going to a completely different playing style and feel, you get that just hit a brick wall, punch in the face type of thing. And that's really what I was going for. So let's check out the beginning of it and then see where I go to after it. And this should make sense to you. Okay, so I think you get the point there. It's using the technique to embellish your fundamental bass line. And that's what's going to create actual song parts and things where, again, it's not just a little noodle piece or a flashy thing you wait to show off, but how to compose your bass lines and have a groove in them. That's still your job, is to keep that pulse going. So how can you use this technique to create a groove? Well, the groove has to be there first. Create your bass line and then go, okay, every bass line has options. I could slap it. I could do it finger style. Or I could dress it up with a lot of tapping. I could play it more simple. I could use a pick. Uh, I could palm mute. There's a hundred different ways you can approach it. But your initial feel has to be there first. Don't just use these shred techniques and then try and find a way to fit it into a song or, you know, jamming a square peg in a round hole type of thing. Make it so that these create your lines. So there's three fundamental components here. And let's recap them. One, hear your bass line first. Don't look to this for your bass line. This is what makes your bass line loud. Your bass line should start in here and in here. Get it in your head and then have the, the bass player you are be unlimited and just able to react to the sound of the drums. Get that going first and figure it out. And sometimes what you hear in your head is going to be a lot more complex and then go for that. But start there. Once you get it out on the board, explore your options and use what the bass line is to kind of dictate where you go with the technique lies. Like I knew right away with this when I heard the and my instinct was more to go to octaves, I went, okay, how about if I take two different octaves and have two different, and kind of moved around until I found what sounded right to me. And I went, okay, I'm kind of hearing this. I'd like it tonality wise to be a little darker. So instead of, you know, a really widespread octave, I'm going to use a fourth and get a lower one. And that really dictated how the whole thing went. And then I, I'm thinking of a chord change. Again, underneath all this rapid tapping, what people don't realize is the real bass line is going. It's just that simple idea. That's all that's going on. But that's what the, you know, my left hand, it's kind of like piano. That's what my left hand is telling you and your ear is picking up on it. But I'm dressing it up with a lot of other things. So it's, it's a simple concept, but if you don't have that idea of imagining the bass line, coming up with how you would normally just react musically to something you hear, 
and then dressing it up a level at a time after you find out where are my accents, what is the core voice of this bass line, and then how do I make a song part. That's how you go from obnoxious guy who tries to shred all the time or overplays parts to guy who can compose parts with really extravagant technique that work. And you can hear players that have mastered this type of thing. Uh, Ryan Martini from Mudvayne is an excellent example of this type of stuff. The slapping, the harmonics, the, you know, just really going bananas through the song. But, at least in my opinion, he doesn't overplay a thing. Phenomenal player, and he is firing on all cylinders all the time. And his voice comes through. The guy grooves like a, a machine. It's fantastic. So players like that have really gotten this idea down, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he's not walking around hearing these drum beats and going, -da 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 -da, you know, kind of figuring it out by speaking it, hearing it in his head, and then sitting down and playing it. So I hope that really helps you build that bridge. Uh, it's When I started working more from my imagination and my uh, my instinct and my influence rather than trying to always sit down with my bass and let half of my habits dictate what I played. It really made a step up in how much of my stuff actually made it to the end result, how much of my things I liked listening to. I really do think it's going to make a big difference for you. And again, this isn't all just about tapping. If you want to play the simpler versions and more complex ones too, but I mean the ones that come directly from your imagination and you figure them out right away, go for that. But I really do hope that you'll start getting on that train and working with that idea. Well, I'm going to do a lesson where we go all the way through the parts of a song just by singing them out, just by hearing them in our head, and then when we sit down with our instrument and the computer, it's just to get the stuff out. You want to have it really nailed down. It doesn't always happen 100% that way, but man, Take it from me, seriously. When it happens like that, it's just magic. When you've sat down and figured out what each instrument should be doing and you hear it in your head clear as a bell, it's really exciting and you realize that the composer really is in your head. You have like your own mini Beethoven moment. And it's really a great moment being an artist and having that. So if I can pass that on and hear from some of you that you had that moment, that would be really awesome. So that's going to wrap this Metal Bass Monday. I've got something coming up about the copyright stuff. i got the EMG following up here pretty soon and a reaction video. And I will see you next week right back here. And we'll talk the other platform and the Discord server. Until then, looks like uh, we're going to be hitting the streets here soon. So back to the gigs, back to the getting out and playing. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So I hope you all have done well, hung in there. And uh, thanks for joining me as always. I'll see you on the next one.